One of the main reasons I like to start a lot of my C-related videos with the disclaimer about the fact that the code is not ready for production is the fact that I'm skipping one of the important steps that you need to actually make the code production ready. And that is the step of actually checking the return values of the functions. So a lot of these operating system calls can actually fail and I'm skipping the checks to actually check if it failed and I'm just assuming that everything succeeds here. Unlike opening sockets in Python, for example, in which if you have, for example, an error with bind, you'll just get an exception raised. On C, you won't have an exception raised in this case. Bind will just return an error value. And there are a lot of other cases that work similarly like this when you're using operating system services. That is because C does not come with built-in exception support. I opened up the code from my video about making a minimalist HTTP server. So it's right here. And as you can see, I skipped a lot of the error checking. So let's go ahead and, for example, add an error checking for the bind call right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a terminal and a man page. I'm going to open the man page of bind and I'm going to search for return. We have a section on the man page that talks about the return value. We can see that if it's successful, zero is returned, but we also have the case of an error. So if an error occurs, minus one is returned and we can use erno to actually get the specific error. So all I got to do is just add an if statement here. And I'm going to check if it's minus one. If so, I'll probably print something on the terminal to that let the user know. We can also go ahead and print the erno. And then I'll just return. Another thing that you can do here is actually close a socket before returning, but that is a subject for a different video. I'm not gonna mix this with this subject. Now let's go ahead and check this out. I'm actually expecting bind to fail if I open the server and then close it and then open it right over again, because the address may still be not cleaned up yet. To get access to Erno, I'm gonna add another include file here. And I'm gonna change my return value to be int. And let's add also a CDIO. Now let's go ahead and compile this. Now let's go ahead and run this program. And I'm gonna make a request to the server. Afterwards, if I run the program again, we can see that bind has failed and we have an error message here. So this is very important because now I actually know as the user of the program that something is wrong. Now I can just check Erno with the Erno command and we could get actual explanation for the error. Address is already in use. By the way, if you wanna examine a program and you don't have all these error handling functions and you just wanna quickly understand which API has failed, you can use strace or ltrace. Let's start with strace. strace is gonna be very verbose, but if you just pass in the program you want to trace. You just go ahead and run it like this. And you can see right over here the bind function that has failed. You can see here the name of the function that was called, the parameters. And finally the return address, which is minus one, which we just checked over here in the code. And you also get an explanation of the error node. So this is very handy. Another option is to use ltrace, which is pretty similar. Except ltrace will be less verbose because it doesn't trace all the system calls. It only traces the library calls from shared objects. For example, in this program, it's using the C library shared object. And you can see the actual shared objects that this program is using by running the LDD command. We see that one of the shared objects it's using is libc.so. So is short for shared object. So all the C library functions that include these functions that just wrap the system calls actually go through this shared object. This is this holds the actual implementation of these functions. Ltrace can actually help me in this case because if I run Ltrace with a.out, the output here is much nicer and cleaner because we only get the actual library calls. We see that now bind has succeeded and we're waiting on accept right over here. Another quick example, you can see here that I call the str char function and I'm dereferencing the pointer right away. This is pretty dangerous, honestly. And you can see this if you look at the man page of str char. Let's go again to the return section. And you can see that this function can return either a pointer to the match character or null if the character is not found. So if it returns null, it's going to actually dereference null and that will crash the program. 
So if this would be for production, you would first check to see if this succeeded or failed, and then you can decide if you want to dereference the pointer or not. By the way, regarding this function, another important thing is to make sure that you're actually working with a null terminated string, because if the string is not null terminated, it will actually go ahead and continue the search after the buffer, and this can be dangerous. So as you can see here, I actually received 256 bytes into a buffer that is size 256 bytes. So better practice here would actually be receiving 255 bytes. So I can keep one null terminator in the end. By the way, this syntax right over here actually initializes the whole buffer to be with zeros. And this is a feature that came with the version C99. So if you work with really old C versions, this will actually only initialize the first element of the buffer to be zero. But since I'm working here with a modern version, this actually works nicely. Let's finish off with a Windows example. I wrote a little program here that just creates a file. It uses the create file A API. A is, stands for ASCII. We also have the W version, which is a wide character, supports other languages besides English. I'm just keeping it simple over here. Notice that I'm not checking the return value here, so I'm just calling this function, and that's it. But this function can fail, and let's go ahead here to the documentation. And if we navigate to the section that talks about return value, we can see that this function either succeeds, and then it just returns an open handle to the file. And if it fails, it actually has a specific return value that you can check, which is invalid handle value. Let's finish off by showing a cool way to examine these API calls, for example, create file. I'm gonna start by compiling this code. I have here open the Visual Studio build tools. It's called x64 native tools command prompt for VS 2022. I'm gonna start by running CL, which is the Visual Studio compiler. And I'm going to pass in the file, which is called createfile.ca. Before running this executable, I'm going to set up the program to listen on this executable. This is a program called Process Monitor. This comes as part of the system internal suite. You can get this in the Windows Store or WinGet. I'm going to put information in the description about how you can get this on your computer. After opening, you want to go here to Filter and then press on Filter. And you're going to choose here Process Name. And you have is, I'm going to put here create file.exe. Then I'm going to add this into the set of filters right over here. So it's going to include every process that has create file.exe on its name. And I'm going to press OK. Now let's go back here and I'm going to run the program. Now let's go back to the process monitor. And you can see here are a lot of API calls that were made by the create file executable we just run. And here's the one actually related to the file we're opening. This is hello.txt. And you can see that this was a create file operation. You can also double click on this and you can get even more information. And another cool feature here is you can actually click on stack and you can, and you can see what, what's going on in the stack in user mode, which is the U letter right over here, and in the kernel mode. So you can see this actually called anti create file in the kernel and you can see what, what went on with this file. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.